My Hung Studio is amazing. <laughs> My new track is Story Louis on me. Bill. It's Little Pew and Little Wee. Jose's changed since becoming a dad, and he's taking things a lot more serious now. The best he can, in every way you can, to look after me and Raul and provide for us and look after his little family. <sighs> for the people that saw the, for the people that saw season two, you would have met Louise and Jose already. And you would have known that when these two met, well, Jose was a musician that was pretty much making no money. Fast forward, he's now in the UK and uh, he's still a musician making no money. But yet Louise, you see, in the season that we saw her, she was pretty much very much delusional. Fast forward to now when she still stays delusional. Can she please explain to me, explain to all of us, how has uh, Jose changed and how is he actually doing his best to provide for you and Rahul? Because he's not making any money. Ah, Louise, Louise, Louise. A very, very interesting human being to watch. I'm actually upset that they've taken this long to put them in the show. And I'm also upset that they're only here for, I believe, the last two episodes, maybe three episodes now. I'm not too sure. But either way, though, let's get into it. He's really, really trying. You're a family man. You can't have a job. If Jose's music isn't bringing in any money, then in my opinion, I don't think that's a career. That's facts upon facts and the stun Jesse stays saying everything that we need to hear everything that we are thinking it is nothing but a hobby I think it's a good idea that maybe Jose puts his music on hold and goes to try a different job Jose is going to go and do some work experience at our local chicken shop I am slightly nervous for Jose I always want him to be okay in whatever he does and hey hey yo 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 this is the Mr. Clean and Hoses K <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> Remember, I love you, chicken. <laughs> Ready? Chicken mom, chicken baby, and chicken dad. It's family chicken. I mean, listen, at least he's out here doing work experience now. But to be fair, he shouldn't be doing that this whole time. The fact that he's only doing work experience after being in the UK for how long? Who knows? But the, but, the, but, the, but the matter of the fact is, despite how long he's been in the UK, this should not be his beginning point of getting a job. This should have been a point he'd done like a few months ago, if not when he first landed, because really and truly, even though he may have not been able to work, he definitely would have been able to do some more experience. So it's kind of sad that uh, they're now putting him in a position to do it now. Ah, <sighs> damn. But hey, like I said, Louise stays delud delusional. And well, Jose stays being Jose. Meanwhile, Jesse just has to do what he can to, to survive this household. And now we've got Rahul in the picture. <laughs> I said this last season, I'll say it again this season. These two should get a freaking spin-off show. I want to see a spin-off of these two, or the, these family. Honestly, because it is freaking TV gold. Come on now. But nonetheless, though, we have been reintroduced to Jose and Louise and, um, well... They basically have not progressed. They're still in the same position. But you know what, though? If you're going to do a job that you don't want to do, you should do it with enthusiasm. So I love the fact that he took on that freaking job, his work experience at the chippy shop, and literally made the best out of it. I love you, chicken! Oh, yeah, the calamity. But to be fair, they probably did that for production. But nonetheless, though, let's continue. Um, Mike's test is going to be at the party. What? I cannot believe what I'm hearing to Jamie. Thanks, wait, since we broke up. When me and Kathleen went on a break, me and Tess dated for a few months. She gets on very, very well with my parents. Does it not cross Jamie's mind? Does it not just cross his teeny little, little brain that maybe your parents have bought your ex Tess because they're trying to sabotage your relationship with Kathleen? Because your mom's pretty much made abundantly clear by her actions and the way she speaks about Kathleen that she's not a fan of Kathleen. Doesn't like Kathleen. So I wouldn't be surprised if your mommy brought this woman over just in spite of Kathleen, not because she even likes the woman, not because she even cares about her, because she knows what damage is going to do and how it's going to create a way between you and your woman, the one that you love so much, Kathleen. But you know, Jamie's so freaking dense. He's always thinking about God knows what he's thinking about. He can't even see it because he sees his mom as an angel. He sees his mom as the person that's there to protect him. He sees his mom as somebody that can never do any wrong. And also, well, I guess as a family man, it is what it is. It's so sad because Jamie really and truly needs to understand where his priorities lie. Does his priorities lie with uh, Kathleen? Or does his priorities lie with uh, what mommy says? Awkward. They come there. 
how I go to the party if the girl that just cheated to me is there. Of course, I feel like not comfortable. And the question is, Jamie, if you was in Kathleen's position, would you feel comfortable going to a meal where you're seeing a guy that she was doing a little with, you know what I'm saying? Especially if it was in a timeline where it made you feel as if she was cheating too. Ah, don't be a hypocrite now. Mm-hmm. Kathleen doesn't go. I don't know what it's going to mean for us. I found that quite interesting though when he said if Kathleen doesn't go then I don't know what's going to mean for us is J if Jamie letting us know that if Kathleen doesn't go to the party that it may jeopardize his relationship with her but why would it though why is it because your family would then begin to not like her for not attending but then again though that would then back up my own claim that your parents or your mother has pretty much done this on purpose to make Kathleen uncomfortable so therefore the rest of the family can then think negative things about Kathleen rather than positive things that's the narrative that I'm going with anyway, based on the behavior that's been displayed to us so far when it comes to Jamie's mother and her relationship with her son, as well as her relationship with Kathleen, which they pretty much don't even have. But yet there is this competition between them. But to be fair, though, Kathleen made a very good point. End of the day, as a Filipino wife, I come into you. I, I want to be with you so I can look after you, cook for you, clean for you, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to be competing with your mom. Meanwhile, Jamie was like, well, in that case, I can have two wives. The freaking sicko. <laughs> Makes me wonder though if he really is an uh, an inbred to be honest with you because the way he behaves sometimes is questionable <laughs> and let's not be and let's not mess about incest inbreds that stuff still exists in this world. I literally found out that there's a place about thirty minutes from me, maybe twenty minutes away from me. That legit is a whole little town filled with freaking inbreds and incest. I was like, what the hell? How am I so close to this madness? So you never know. But nonetheless, though, let's uh, crack on with the uh, next couple. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions regarding, um, you know, the regarding the mum inviting his ex to this party. Do you think it's because I think? Is it because you think they're trying to sabotage the relationship with Kathleen? Or do you think it's something else? Let me know. Let's get into it. This is what we will do when you move here, you know, just go on walks in nature, mm -hmm. sit, have a picnic, <laughs> look at the farm, look at the flowers. The last few weeks have showed me that Sprite and I live in two completely different worlds. You know, John definitely is not the brightest person in the room. I mean, to be fair, everything that John does is to benefit himself. It's never to benefit Sprite. That's the grand scheme of it. Why are you taking him out on a picnic, right? You know, the picnic isn't even the issue. That, that is fine. I think it's a nice idea. But if, where he took him is ridiculous. He basically took him into someone else's back garden, to be honest with you. I mean, that's how it looks. You know what I mean? Like, literally took him to a, a field where there's a bunch of nothing but dead plants and a pig. Who does that? That's not romantic. That is gruesome. Now, it'd be different if you took him to one of the loveliest spots. To like, listen, let me tell you something right. Let me tell you something right now. When it comes to lovely little places that you can take someone in the UK, all right? I'm your guy. If you've seen my Instagram, at Madsy Media, you already know that I'm always doing hikes and little trips to amazing places that, that are just picturesque in the UK. And then John decides to take Sprite to, to, to where? What? Do better. Do better. I know there's plenty of nice places around near where you live. Whether they are now away, 30 minutes away, or two hours away. I know you're within distance. This is ridiculous. This is ugly. If I was Sprite, I would have broke up with you on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Come on now, don't mess about me. Who do you think you are? <laughs> you think I'm worth just this? This? Are you crazy? And make it worse, the weather wasn't the best anyway. So really, until they should have took him something more out, more indoors, in my opinion. More cozy, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Ah, we continue. I hope this doesn't affect Sprite's decision to come and live in the UK. Ah, yes, I forgot about that bit there. So obviously, he talks about recognizing the difference between him and Sprite. I mean, to be honest with you, I, the question that John needs to ask, him is this, ask himself is this. Because me and Sprite are so freaking different, and I recognize that by him being here, do I believe that we are going to be compatible for the long term? Or do I believe that our differences and the things that we like and dislike are going to eventually create a wedge behind be, between us? They're going to push us away from each other because that can happen. Do you see what I'm saying? But John isn't a realistic person. He just wants what he wants and he expects Sprite to pretty much convey himself into what John wants and that's about it. And that's where their relationship goes absolutely downhill. But anyway, let's get into this one here because uh, Johnny Boy wants to, wants to wants, wants some answers. Okay, sure. I want to get married so that you can live here. Really? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? I want to get married. It's a hard decision for me. I don't know. 
I still have a lot to think. Reasons that you're not ready to get married yet? Financial stuff, I have to leave my friends, and my work, my... I'm not too sure that I'm gonna come back. I'm not gonna lie to you, when I heard that statement, I was like, yes, yabba yabba noob! Purely because uh, these two are not compatible. And to be honest with you, John has a lot of work to do because he's so freaking self-centered. Honestly, I don't even know why Sprite was even with John in the first place. You know what I mean? Because, boy. But then at the same time, though, let's, let, let's for argument stakes, sakes, maybe the reason why he doesn't want to move to the UK is because he only came to the UK to see if he would be happy to live there and to see if he'd be happy to work in the UK. I think he's gone to the workplace. He's checked it out. He has a mind in it. It's been his vibe. But he's then had to deal with the headache or the fact that John doesn't allow him to breathe because John was telling him of last episode for literally going to work and then not coming back in time to then make him dinner. You see what I'm saying? It's a complete calamity. So to be honest with you, am I surprised that uh, he's thinking, he's weighing up his options. He's like, if I stay in Thailand, in Bangkok, I can still I can still work my job, still be around my friends, and I don't need to be told what to do by this dude. Or do I come to the UK to work in the UK, but then to live in the country and to never do anything that I like, and then be told what to do by this dude? It's a freaking no-brainer. Unlike Michael from Night Day Fiance US version, who waited seven years to finally get to America, Sprite understands his worth. He's like, listen. Nah, my worth ain't this ain't this low. I'm good. I, I, I'm good to stay where I'm at. <laughs> so I love that for Sprite. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. You know what I mean? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Don't lower yourself just to, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. And I, sometimes I just, I just, what? I'm here for you. Don't lie, you're not here, you're not there for him. If you was ever there for him, then you two wouldn't have even been in this position in the first place. You're in this position because you haven't been there for him. Point blank, period. Tell me otherwise, if you dig what I'm saying. But hey, with that being said, though, I really, 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 really hope that uh, Sprite went back to Tyler, which obviously he did, and uh, he stayed there. When they do a tell-all, I want to hear that Sprite is still in Bangkok and he's not coming back. And if they are going to be together, it's only going to be in the terms that John moves over to Bangkok instead, if you dig what I'm saying, and then ends up being Sprite's little B-I-C-T-H. <laughs> the way that uh, John wanted Sprite to be his B-I-C-T-H, if you dig what I'm saying. But nonetheless, let's move on to the next couple. Mm -hmm. Some Egyptian men marry an Egyptian woman behind their back. Don't think about that. But Some that. men. Why? Oh. Why? Maybe... He, he wants a, a thing from his wife. She don't have. This is so. That's not an intention in future. Do you think you feel I want to do that? You're my husband. I have to ask you these things. Tell me about that again. I can't do that. You could. I'm different. You have everything I need. Okay. Okay. Well, it's good that she asked the question. It's good. It's good that she got the answer that she needed. But uh, who marries someone and then asks him these questions after they've married that person? Oh yeah, Nicole does that. Let's continue. Hmm. It's good we have a big fight and he just don't want to resolve it with me and thinks I could just marry someone else and I just don't know. You don't know? <laughs> but you knew that you were stupid enough to marry someone without actually knowing everything that you need to know about that person. I'm not surprised that you don't know. Where's your brain cells at? I love Egyptian food, but I don't know if I can actually live in Egypt. Don't ask me to scratch It'd be really hard for me. Everything's different. The weather, it's just... Like, it's beautiful, but it's just so hot. My fellow British people, did you hear what she said? She doesn't want to be in Egypt because it's too hot. But guess what, though? Winter comes in the UK. I really need a summer holiday. I really need a summer holiday. This is too cold. You know how British people are. You know what I'm saying? You know how we be when it comes here. Yeah, we need to go to the sun. The sun comes now. Nah, this is too hot. <laughs> when it comes to it, never happy with the weather. When she said that, I was like, okay, now you're just trolling because that's just moving mad. But nonetheless, though, listen. Originally, she told him that she was willing. In fact, she told us all that she was willing to move to Egypt if things don't work out for them in the UK. The idea of him coming to the UK is to test the waters. If it doesn't work, then she's more than happy to go to Egypt. So for her to change her mind before he's even come to the UK, in my opinion, is outrageous. Now, I get it. She's doing it. She's changing her mind based on her, her current experiences being in, uh, uh, in Egypt. And I get it. I completely get it. But here's the thing, though. 
why marry this man without even figuring this out as well? Because you see, their marriage is based on the conversations that they, their marriage is based on the conversations that, that they have already had, right? And based on conversations that they haven't had. Why are they now having conversations that they haven't had after marriage? And also, why is she now trying to change things after they've been married? And they haven't even stuck to the plan yet. The plan was he comes to the UK first. Then you can rethink about it. The way she's the way, the way she's dropping it like that. Yeah, if you ask me, that's unacceptable. But it is what it is. Yeah. I have to change my whole life. I have to confess what that. Especially if we're gonna have children, it'll be really hard for me. That if you know we have children and they talk Arabic. That's why you then learn Arabic. Why marry someone from a different language if you don't if you're not gonna learn his language from a different language? That doesn't make sense, right? But anyway, you know what I mean. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. And not English first. What if I don't understand? Technically speaking, it'd be actually easier for the child to learn Arabic first and English after because English is, an e is like literally the easiest language to learn from my, from, my, from my understanding. So why wouldn't you want the child to learn Arabic first? I mean, I get, I get her point. But again, though, this is a conversation you should have had before marriage. Our children. But, Habib, you know, you will be Muslim one day. For you, when you learn more Islamic religion. I have to understand how hard it would be for me. I'm not going to convert yet because I don't know anything about the religion. If I asked me right now, would I convert to Islamic religion? I would say no. <sighs> I've got to say, if there was an award for the person that has lacked the least brain cells of this season, I, I mean, right now, I've got to give it to Nicole, to be honest, because Charlotte is one thing, but Charlotte knows what she's doing. She's been tactical, you know what I mean? Sam, again... I mean, Sam's just a freaking clown, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? But when it comes to just brain cells and common sense and doing the right thing before and, and asking the right things and finding the right information before getting married, like, who does this? I, I hope this storyline is just fake as hell because this, this is impossible. What is wrong with this girl? She's embarrassing herself. I mean, listen, if anybody wants to see and think that maybe there are other British women built like her, from my personal experience, I have never met a British woman that is built like her in this format, to be honest with you. Ooh, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, have I, have I, have I, hmm. No, 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 that's somebody who, no, 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 yeah, no, I've, no, 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 no. I don't know any British woman that moves like this, so please, uh, do not think that she represents the women in the UK, because honestly, uh, she doesn't, <laughs> you know? I mean, some do get mad a bit quickly, but usually it's because they've still found out the things that they need to know, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that they still marry someone with the right reasons, but uh, I'm just saying that the reasons that she's done is crazy to me, if you do what I'm saying. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn, yeah. I hope that she's learned from a lesson though, and I hope that nowadays she's she's got her mind in the right places. But hey, the season isn't over yet, so we've got to see what else happens with uh, uh, Nicole and Taha. And most importantly, I definitely want to see how their to all goes as well. Because of course, that would be more up to date in terms of how their relationship is currently. Obviously, these things are filmed obviously a year in advance anyway. But with that being said though, let me know your thoughts and your opinions regarding Nicole. Do you think she was right to marry Taha, despite not knowing all of these things? In fact, if you ask me personally, Nicole's who's worse, Nicole or or or, or Ashley? Because Ashley was married to Emmanuel because she married him without even meeting his kids, not ever knowing who his kid. Who his kid. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a good question. Let me know which one you think is worse, in my opinion. In your opinion, if you did what I'm saying, Ashley or Nicole, getting married and then trying to find out root answers after that marriage. Yeah. I'm going to hold my opinion to myself. I'm curious what you want to say. I don't want to lead you guys into the one I think, if you dig what I'm saying. But hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, peace.